Check one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four.
Sometimes the world feels like a mess Full of drama, full of stress And life puts a fist right in your ribs You can hide if you choose to And no one would even blame you Or you can let them see how you deal with it That even in the darkest place his love can make you radiate Doesn't matter how deep, how dark the night is Keep hope and keep on shining And they'll see his light burning in your heart And if the road gets rough, just keep your head up Let the world see what you made of That his love's alive in your deepest part Like a flame, like a burning Star, you can shine right where you are. He made you to glow in the dark. Good morning and welcome to Inspire Church. Glad you guys are all here worshiping with us. I want to invite you to stand to your feet as we begin this service with praise and worship through song. And kiddos, I need you to take a listen to this because I think you're going to know this one. Help me out. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move in many mighty ways God is on the move stirs a search soul and someone says send me here I go I know I know I know I know God is on the move on the move hallelujah God is on the move in many mighty ways God is on the move on the move hallelujah God is on the move on the move Aren't you thankful for a God who is always on the move? Amen? Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, Inspire. Good morning, Online Inspirations. Do me a favor, air high-five your neighbor. Tell them, glad you're here. Glad you made it today. So much exciting things to let you know about and uh, wanted you to be fully aware of everything that's taking place here at Inspire. So I've got a very special guest. You know her, you love her. Let's give it up for Pastor Tori, please. Yay, Pastor Tori. 
Hey, some really great things as we kind of transition in this time of children's ministry. And Pastor Tori is going to tell us what some of those incredible, wonderful things are. So, Pastor Tori. Okay, so first of all, if you are a kid today and you missed out on Camp Inspire, we are so cold. It was so cold. And we're so sorry, but it was so cold. So this is what I did. I packed special activity bags. And you know how you've been having to give back the Legos that are in the bag? Today, everything that's in the bag, you get to keep. Yes. Bring it all home. Well, all right. So that's some, your special surprise today because we felt bad. Some people may be looking for extra Christmas gifts. They may be taking some of those oh, home, right? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I that know. works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Uh, number two is this. I have such good news. I know last week everyone thought it was really bad news, mm -hmm. but you just had to wait for the good news. So I want to invite somebody really special to me up here. Miss Michelle Nicholas, could you please join me up here? Yeah. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Okay, so this is the funny thing. Pastor Keith, you don't know this, but Michelle and I used to share an office here at this church, and people would regularly get the two of us confused because we are so much alike. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got older together. We did. Right. So the good news is, is that Miss Michelle is so much like me and has such a heart that I have for our kids, for our church, for our ministry. This is just like coming home for her. Mm. And so I wanted to say, Michelle, welcome. I cannot think of a better person, mm. right, mm -hmm. to help out. I love this girl. She's my family. She'll be your family. Michelle, just tell us a couple of thoughts. You just took my thoughts. I am so excited. I am so excited because there is nothing that I love more in my life than to talk about Jesus mm -hmm. and to share what he can do for those little ones. I mean, that's when they're being transformed by the renewing of their minds. So I just, I'm so excited. So thank you for letting me. Thank you for asking me. I'm excited to be here. And I look forward to getting to know you all. And anybody who wants to serve in children's ministry, come see me. Yeah. She's that good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is. Okay, so here's the thing. We have a brand new slide mm -hmm. in our student center. And both Miss Michelle and I went down it this last week. We mm -hmm. had a great time going down it. And we want to invite anybody who wants to to come back. We're going to be waiting in the student center after the service today. If you want to come down, but you, you may say, I'm 45. It doesn't matter. We went down it. It's fun. So come back and join us. Um, enjoy the beautiful atmosphere that's back there now. We really want you to come see it. So we're going to do like a little open house. The last thing is we are going to be indoors for kids ministry next right. week. So right. Miss Michelle and I will be setting that up and getting that ready. So here we go. It's just getting too cold to be out there. So we're going in. That's awesome. Big round of applause right. for these two wonderful, amazing ladies. Thank you so much. Hey, and, and parents and kids, make sure you do that as we transition. And what a seamless handoff from Pastor Tori to Miss Michelle. It's going to be amazing. So please, parents with your kiddos, stop by fully renovated kids space thanks to faithful people like you. So go check it out so your kids can begin to build the excitement for next week being inside for Inspire. Now, other exciting things taking place in the life of our church. We want to let you know about Be Inspired, a brand new series, kind of our fall launch, which is a little delayed this year because of, well, you know why. But we're going to talk about something called, what does it look like for us to be inspired? How can we encounter our community in a way that is really going to reflect Christ and help change the tide of what things are taking place? How can we really make sure that Christ is pouring through us? So starting on October the 11th, there's going to be all sorts of exciting things that you will hear about for that. And one of those is going to be a brand new opportunity for you to connect in community with other family members. So I've asked Pastor Colin, our growth and disciple development pastor, to come up. And he's going to share a little bit about some of these brand new opportunities we have for community in the midst of that. So Pastor Colin, welcome, my friend. Tell us yeah, a little bit about you. how can we get connected. So if you walked in and you grabbed a bulletin, you'll notice that there's an insert in there, a lovely insert. And on this insert is 13 groups that we're going to be launching October 11th. Some have continued to meet throughout COVID. Some are going to be brand spanking new ones. So lots of opportunities to connect in community through our grow groups. Um, so look through those, that, this list, and if any of these spark your interest or fit your schedule, they're divided up by days of the week because we know how crazy our schedules can be sometimes, right? And so sometimes there's only one day that really works for us. So we've really made an, uh, a, a strategic effort to make sure that we're offering small groups most days of the week to make it available for you guys. So we want you to look at that list, and then if you remember your Connect card mm -hmm. that's in your bulletins as well. We use these a lot, okay? 
We would love you to look over that list, look at your Connect card, fill it out, and in the questions and comments section, just indicate the name of the group that you are interested in visiting or possibly joining. And so if you were interested in my group, you'd just simply write Sherfield Group in the comments section, okay? And then you drop those in the boxes as you leave this morning. That's awesome. I heard we also even have an e-group or an online group Correct, for those who yeah. maybe are here joining us online. Hey, online family. We've even got groups for you. If you're not quite ready to come join us, join us virtually online. That's, that's an exciting new possibility, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. Loretta Town is going to be leading that group, and we're going to be using the uh, platform of Zoom. So it's uh, going to be a great opportunity if you haven't used Zoom before. It's very user-friendly. I really encourage you to check it out. Mm, I love it. Awesome. Let's give Pastor Colin a big round of applause. Thank you, Pastor Colin, for helping us get connected. That's good. Hey, do me a favor, everyone, stand to your feet. We're going to continue our worship and praise through song. But as we do so, give your neighbor your best excited face. <gasps> That's right, because we're excited about what God's going to do as we continue to worship him in song today. I love seeing the smiles on your face. Continue to worship this morning, Willie, will you? I don't know about you guys, but I am so grateful to be in the Father's house this morning. Let's worship him this morning. On this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does.
Thank you, Jesus. So many times in scripture it says that God is so good. How many of you believe that this morning? Amen. Let's continue our worship. Yes. Sing with me, will you? Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. Sing it now. So with all your hearts now. God, you're so good. Let's just praise him now. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me.
Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, you are so good to us, Lord, when we sit and think about the way you provide, the way that you provide through adversity, the way that you, uh, you, give, you give to us when we feel that we can't go anymore, Lord, we know that we can just stand in your love. Lord, thank you so much for the way that you love us, for the way that you provide. Lord, I pray for anybody in this church that's, that's struggling this morning, Lord, I I know that it's hard when we hear a sermon like we heard last week to, to see that uh, through hard times um, comes opportunity and growth. But Lord, uh, I can attest to that, that you can stand by us through the hard times. And in the end, we're stronger, Lord. Thank you so much for the way that you work through every situation in our life, whether good or bad. Lord, also, I just want to pray for the, the families in, that are represented here that, uh, that couldn't make it in this morning, whether they're joining us online or something else happened. Lord, you just, just wrap your arms around them this morning and let them know that there's a family here that loves them, Lord, and you love them so much more than we could ever do that. Thanks again um, for just the opportunity to worship you this morning in, in a beautiful building with, with our friends and our, our family. Lord, help us to, uh, to sit and just reflect in your, your word this morning. Uh, Holy Spirit, we invite you here. Just move in this service in every aspect of, uh, of the day. And Lord, let this day and what we learn overflow into our week, into our, our lives, in a way that we won't leave the same way that we came in. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so now this is offering time. You guys can sit down. <clears throat> I want to remind you of the different ways that you can give. We can give online at um, liveinspiredchurch.give and text. We have the app. You can do it in person here. We've got offering boxes in the back. I just want to remind you guys of what your, your giving does. Um, so we do have that. Like we had talked about the kids' ministry area, it looks sweet. I encourage you to go over there. Apparently 45-year-old is the, the cutoff for going down the slide. <laughs> or, or I don't know if I'd fit. Uh, we'll see. I, maybe I'll give it a shot. But um, just know that your giving um, is going to encourage these kids over there in that end, um, it's it looks awesome, and they're going to have a blast, and it's going to impact them, because we know that if you reach them before the age of 14, it's going to change their life, and so that over there is where we're going to impact our community for the next generation, and so your giving is um, is an imperative part of that, um, and so thanks for the way that you have given, and I just um, appreciate the way that you're going to continue to do to do that, and uh, and now we're going to pass it over to Pastor Keith. Hey, thanks, Matt. Really appreciate that. Great job, huh? morning everybody glad to see you um there's a lot of pictures being taken right now <clears throat> oh you noticed yeah I, I just you know there's been this whole corona beard thing that's been going on lately and for those who are follically challenged facially like i am um i can't grow a beard so i just did the next best thing it's pretty amazing isn't it some of you are having mixed feelings, I'm telling right now. You're not sure. Just to look at some of your faces. It's something that I've taken a mental snapshot of right now, and I'm not sure I'll be able to forget it. And some of you may be thinking, listen, Pastor Keith, there is so much change in my life right now, at my job, and in my home, and at school, and at work, and, and now my pastor has a fake beard. Really? I mean, that's, that's one change too many. And I did this on purpose to kind of let you know, anytime something changes in your life, you have a reaction, don't you? Some of you went like this, oh man. Some of you laughed, some of you are like, what in the world is happening right now? But when all the change happens in our life, there is a sentiment that oftentimes comes to our heart. Sometimes we express it in our mouth, and here's the phrase that oftentimes we say, I can't wait for things to get back to what? 
Because there's something comforting about normal, about expected, about routine. You didn't expect me to come out here, and as soon as I came out here like this, you had to make an adjustment, didn't you? How am I going to handle this now today? And so you're wondering a little bit, man, wouldn't it be great if things got back to, to just normal? But last week we asked a different question. We said, what if this isn't the statement? What if this isn't the thing that we want to make the goal of our life? What if getting back to normal isn't the goal? What if there's something better than normal available for you? See, that's not just something Pastor Keith made up. This is actually something we see time and time again in God's Word, that any time troubles and temptations and changes come into people's life, God's Word doesn't call it something that we just get back to those old normal ways of doing things. It actually calls it something different. It calls it an, well, an opportunity, right? Remember our verse from last week? Check it out in James chapter 1, beginning with verse 2. Let's throw that up there. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider in a what? Opportunity for great joy. Check out what it says next. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. We said each and every one of us is going to be going through this time. That's something we all have in common. But how we merge on the other side, well, that depends on us. And my hope and prayer for you is because you are going to go through troubles, because you are going to go through all these changes in life and unexpected things coming your way, you could either set getting back to normal as your goal or you could settle for something so much better to allow these trials, these troubles that come knocking on your door to make you stronger to come through stronger and so my hope and my prayer for us is that this is the desire because there have been so many people who are just like you who've gone through troubles and trials but when they came through they didn't desire normal they wanted god to help them come through stronger and for the next few weeks as we kind of walk through this i'm going to share with you some stories of people who have experienced this on their own some of our family members who i have had the experience of getting to know and in hearing some of the trials and troubles that they've gone through, but how God, through his grace and through his power, has brought them through stronger. And kiddos, I'm so glad you're here today for this specific one because you're going to get a chance to hear from Mr. Jensen and Val Jensen, who teaches your grow class, who teaches a kids' church. Man, what an incredible story of coming through stronger. And, and I don't want to say any more. I just want to invite you to direct your attention to the screens and let's hear from the Jensen's this morning. Hey, I'm here with my friends, the Jensen's, and thank you so much, Scott and Val, for joining me today as we're talking about something called Come Through Stronger. We've been going through this series realizing that troubles happen in life, but we don't have to come through as victims. God can make us stronger through those things. What are some of those troublesome times that you have had to go through? Well, one that probably rises to the top in the fall of 2016, um, as Scott would be sitting doing his schoolwork every night in the recliner, I was noticing his foot was like bopping and just figured that it was anxiety and that anxiety was ramping up quite a bit to the point where I was looking for weighted blankets for Christmas and, and just different things that I could help support him in that. Well, I went to the doctors by myself and I figured it was going to be just a normal um, visit and I called Valerie right afterwards and said, well, the doctor thinks I have Parkinson's and so um, I, I went through some losses and um, I lost my independence. I'm not driving anymore. So yeah, I gave up a lot of things and I felt a lot of losses um, because of my career being done, because of losing the driving. Um, I went through a period of feeling like there was, I had no purpose. You know, there was no, all my purposes had been taken away. Um, my career, my, my passion, my purpose in life was to teach kids and that was gone. Um, but it was still that great loss and of the a void inside of me that said, you, you're empty. You know, you have, you have no purpose. You have nothing to contribute. And I'd heard that voice several years before, um, that voice that said, you're no good, you, you have no value. And um, it was through, through that experience that happened several years earlier that I was able to know and recognize the voice of the enemy. And I was able to rise above that voice and know that God had a purpose for me and I would trust in him with all my heart and lean on and lean on my own understanding. And so I didn't understand it 
And, but I would trust in God because I knew that he would have a purpose. He had a purpose. He, he was going to work things out for me. Um, he was going to give me opportunities. And he has. What did you learn about God through that trouble and trial? What I learned about God was that I, one thing I learned was that he gives wisdom through other people. Okay. He gives understanding through other people. Because it was um, through another person that um, I was reassured that I was not going to die with Parkinson's. Someone came and said right away and said to Valerie, um, I have a 96, 90 some year old granny who's, who had Parkinson's and she didn't die because of Parkinson's, she just died with Parkinson's. You know, and she shook, but she prayed and she, you know, she was alive long uh, for many years. And so um, I learned that God helps us. Through, I felt I felt comforted by that because I felt like someone was watching out for me. Someone was looking out for me, and so um, I didn't feel so alone through through that whole process. But um, I knew that God was feeding wisdom through other people, um, and I learned very quickly that it was not a death sentence. And I was not going to die from it, and God had a, God was going to use me, and He was going to use my story. And so I knew that I was just going to be all right. So how have you come through stronger because of this? I have two, two things. God gave me purpose in two areas. And that's how he strengthened me. Because he showed me that he had, he had some things planned out for me. And the first thing was he worked out so that I could teach a grow, uh, the grow class at church. So I could teach um, a group of um, elementary kids and we could just go deep into the Bible, and it was exciting. The second thing was, I am able to um, lead a group of dads in a dad's um, Insight for Dads, Insight for Dads group at Insight Pregnancy Center. I've learned to filter a lot of things through Philippians 4.8. Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. Those are the things I'm supposed to think on because I used to think about all the possible scenarios of the ways that things could go worst case scenario. Um, and in definitely recent years, it's been, no, oh, is this true yet? It's not true yet. I don't have to worry about that. Um, is it lovely? No, nope, it's not lovely. <laughs> I'm not going not gonna to worry about that scenario happening and, and just, just trust. And then the other thing again is, is God's faithfulness. So I'm, I'm less likely to panic, but, um, Loving music, loving worship music, so many songs uh, come to mind. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Um, with every breath that I'm able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Great is thy faithfulness. Um, on Christ the solid rock I stand. There's just so many things. He's, he is faithful. He has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And so those things have helped me to come through stronger because I know that I don't have to I, when I'm weak, he's strong, so I don't even have to be the strong one. Um, but yeah, his track record is is flawless, and so I don't have to carry it. Isn't that awesome? Can we give the Jansons a big round of applause for sharing their story with us today? Man, I love that. Each week you're going to get a chance to hear from some of our family members about how God has brought them to, through a trial and a trouble, but actually through that time they have come through stronger, and I pray that you reach out and thank the Jensen's personally just for sharing their story. And each week that you come with a little bit of anticipation of how you're going to hear again through someone else, how God's made them stronger because of it. Now, today we're going to dive into something that is another way for us to come through stronger. But as we do, I brought an item that I think is kind of representative of the time in which we live. It will help us hopefully understand a little more what God's word has to say to us. At first, it may be a little odd, but follow with me, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what it is. Yeah, a mask. Has this not become one of the um, images or one of the symbols of uh, our division in our country today? Who would have thought a little piece of cloth with some elastic could be such a divisive thing? I'm sure you've maybe heard, well, whose side are you on? Oh, how could you ever be on that side? Because everyone knows that my side is right, right? <laughs> So maybe that's been the case for you. So let's get 
really real this morning. How many of you have ever had maybe a difficult or challenging conversation with someone, maybe a family member, a friend, co-worker, a neighbor, about some pandemic or coronavirus type issue? Let me give you some examples. Like maybe the economy, or politics, or school, or mask policies. How many of you have ever had challenging conversations like this in this season? Yes, most all of us. So the question is, what do we do about this? Because it's intriguing. If you don't handle it right, some things can happen. I mean, there are certain people where family members don't even talk to each other anymore. Culture is completely canceled. Other people, people have lost jobs. I mean, it is an intriguing situation. So what in the world do you do? Do you pick a side, us versus them? No, not really. When you break it all down, really there comes down to about two primary responses that you can have in situations like this. The first one is this. You could choose to ignore it. You could choose to do your best to kind of just stick your head in the sand and pretend that it doesn't exist and just let the world around you burn. And if that's the choice that you make, good luck. (laughs) There's only so much you could do to avoid topics and conversations like this before trouble starts knocking on your door. So if that's one primary option, and that we know is going to end in not good things for us, what's the second? The second thing is to engage, to be a part of the solution, to live our faith out in a way that reflects Christ in the world in which we live. And one of the things I love so much about Jesus is that's exactly what he did. Think about it just for a second. The Savior of of our world, when he saw the world was broken and fallen and being torn apart by sin, he didn't stay far off and just ignore it and kind of say, hey, good luck with the troubles you guys got right now. No, he, he came from heaven to earth, and he was the incarnation God with us, and he dove into the mess, he dove into the trouble, and he didn't avoid difficult and challenging things. And if you've ever read the words of Jesus, you see that he didn't shy away from those hard conversations. He talked about government and about taxes. He talked about sexuality and divorce and lust and all sorts of other things. And I just want to tell you from the very beginning, my friends, I think we as a church are at our best when we follow Jesus' example. We don't just ignore the world around us and just let it burn, but rather we too engage in ways that reflect him and his truth. But this next part, this is so very important. As a matter of fact, I want to make sure you're doing something with me. Hey, online watchers, do me a favor. Take your phone. I know you're scrolling your Insta right now. Just put it off to the side for a minute. Some of you are like, how did he know? I know. I've been where you are. And for those of you inside, this is a critical part to make sure you're listening. So if you're tracking with me, if you're listening, just give me a thumbs up. If you have a neighbor that's not giving you a thumbs up, give him a little elbow prod. Very good. Okay, well, good, because we've got to hear this next part. The way we engage... The way we enter into conversations like this is absolutely critical. Because maybe some of you have heard this phrase before. It is so true. It's possible to be right in a really wrong way. (laughs) See, you can be absolutely right about a subject, but the way that you're right, the way that you approach your rightness, can really do some significant damage. So again, how do we engage the culture in which we live in a way that reflects, yes, both the truth of Jesus Christ and also the grace of Jesus Christ? How do we approach it with both truth and grace when you run into those divisive conversations about restaurants and occupancy and masks and school options and even silly things like, what's the deal with all these pumpkin spice lovers these days, right? Right? How do you engage in conversation? Well, the the beautiful thing is God's Word actually teaches us how to do exactly that. And there's a passage I want us to dive into today that tells us how to engage our world, a very divisive, a very divided world, in a way that exhibits, yes, both His truth and His grace. So we're going to look at that today. And here's my hope and my prayer from the very beginning, my family, that we will come through this time, this troublesome season, not with just normal conversations, just keep having normal conversations like we were, but rather stronger conversations that will come through stronger and learn from the truth of God's word how to engage the world that is sometimes so divided, so different from us, but in a ways that always points to Jesus Christ. Does that sound like a good idea? I think it does to me. Would you do me a favor, stand with me this morning, turn with me to Colossians chapter 4. We're going to read verses four or 5 and 6, excuse me. Great passage. Paul is actually talking and he's giving instructions primarily to those people who are going to be encountering people who don't yet know Jesus as Lord and Savior. 
So that's the context here of the church in Colossae, but there's so much for us to engage. Yes, with a lot of people who don't know Jesus, 71% of our people in this neighborhood do not yet have a relationship with Jesus Christ, so this is present and relevant to us. But there are also some truths that we can learn as we encounter even each other in the body of faith. Look at what God's, look at what God's word says to us in Colossians chapter 2, or 4, excuse me, verses 5 and 6. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every what's that word again man it's like there's a theme in the word huh let your conversation let it be gracious and and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone pray with me this morning my friends god you're more than good you're amazing we did sing that you are amazing you are so good because you answer prayers and you love us so and we love you so and So right now we pray that you will just pour out all that it is that we need to receive. Holy Spirit, have your way in each and every heart. If they only hear the words of a sermon, they're going to miss it. But if they hear your words speaking life to them, we know that we can be changed. We know that we can make a difference. We know that we can embody you. So Holy Spirit, have your way in each and every one of us. Thank you for your promise that your word is alive and active. Cut through anything that stands in the way and speak to our hearts. And it's in your name, Jesus, we ask this. And everybody said... Amen. You may be seated. Okay, just for fun, let's see how much we we have in common today. I'm going to give you some options, and I'm going to see which one you pick, okay? So first option is this, dog or cat. How many of you are dog people? How many of you like the kitty cats? Much less, but very bold and strong of you. Good, okay, all right. Uh, Netflix or YouTube, how many of you are Netflixers? You have to pick one or the other. If you had to pick Netflix or YouTube, how many of you are YouTube? Oh, wow, I didn't see that one coming. Well done. Um, what about this next one? This is near and dear to my heart. How many of you love yummy, delicious, fruity, tasty, wonderful pie? Or how many of you like cake? All right, so how many of you are pie, wonderful, delicious pie fans? Two hands if you really love pies. Wish it. Yes, and how many of you like cake? I don't want to look at you right now. Is that right? Okay, another one could be divisive, not trying to be. How many of you are, are fans of country music or literally anything else all right country music or country music fans anything else okay i see where we're going with this all right this next one's important for marriages uh toilet paper how many of you roll it over how many of you prefer to roll it under how many of you are the over rollers how many of you are under oh much less (laughs) much less than this one all right what about your beverage of choice you woke up this morning a nice fall chilly morning you had to get something to warm you up how many of you like hot tea How many of you like coffee? So how many hot tea fans? Ooh, small but mighty. Coffee fans? Yeah. How many of you want a little pumpkin spice in there too? Woo-hoo-hoo! Much less, but still, we'll stick with it. I got that thumbs up. All right, and last one. Maybe the most divisive of all. Michigan or Michigan State. Okay, so let's do it. How many of you are Wolverine fans? How many of you go Sparty? Any Ohio State fans here today? Better not be, right? (laughs) <laughs> oh. all right just let, let's check this out let me see if any
rather, rather through prayer, because you're making the most of every opportunity, you're, you're speaking gracefully and attractively, Lord, what's the right response in this moment? You know, Jesus taught this same thing to his disciples. Matthew chapter 10, he sends out his disciples, and I love what he says. Don't worry, let's throw that verse up there. Don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the what? The right words at the what? The right time. If you guys have ever been engaged in a conversation with someone who maybe has not yet committed their life to Jesus or is so very different from you, sometimes there's this frustration that comes because you're like, oh, I, I want to tell you all the answers all at once. And maybe you don't know the right thing to say. You don't know the right thing to do. I find so much hope and comfort in this idea that God will give us the right word at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking. It will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. That there's this time period where you wait on the spirit of God to speak and give you direction and guidance. And God's word says, if you'll do that, God will give you the right words at the right time. That there may be that moment where you don't have all the answers. You can be honest enough to say that I don't know what the answer is to this, but I'd love to walk through with you. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to continue this conversation more and more. And as you do that, as you begin through graciousness and attractiveness in your conversation, you can continue walking with them, dis determining the next best step. And that's what God's been teaching me, that everyone has a next step. That everyone has a next step. And we need to do our best to, through prayer, ask God, hey, God, help us to have the right response, to help whoever it is take the next best step. As a matter of fact, our great job as followers of Jesus is to help people take that next best step. And that's what God's been teaching me. As a matter of fact, I brought out a little something else to help describe this today. I think this illustration works well for me because it helps me remember what my great responsibility is. So I brought us a ladder, and, and I'm not going to climb on this much today, I promise, okay? But here, here's what our ladder is. It's a little describer of, of some next steps, and I thought this helps me a lot thinking about the different people in the different situations that I run into. Because sometimes when I run into people, guess what? They're way down here. They are closed. Absolutely closed. I hate church. I hate your idea about God. I don't want to talk about anything. What do I do in moments like this? I pray, Lord, would you give me the right response? And God, through the Holy Spirit, lets me know in moments like this as I rely on Him what do I say? What do I do? And most often times it's this, I'm so sorry you feel that way. Can you tell me why it is that you're having such a hard time with church or with faith or with believing in God? And oftentimes what happens is they'll tell me a story about how someone let them down, about a church that was supposed to be there for them in a moment, or about a home upbringing that just wasn't a good spot. But if I could just help them move from this step one close to this next step of, of hurting, not that I want them to be hurting, but admit that they are hurting. Because at the core of the being, sometimes so much of the things that we are struggling with in our life, and so many people that I've run into, it's just a masking of pain. That they have been hurt, that people have let them down. That there was a church that was supposed to be there for them, or a pastor that was supposed to be there for them, or someone with a Jesus fish in the back of their car that really ripped them off. And really what they're doing is they're just, they're just hurting. If I could just help them get from here to here the power of the Holy Spirit working through us as his vessels. And then I try to get to that spot where maybe if you could just ask some questions. What, what if God's not like that? What if there was a God that cared for you? What if there was a God that did want to meet all of your needs, who would never leave you alone? Would that be something that you would be interested in hearing more about? Because I'll tell you what, I've had lots of questions in my life, but I've been so thankful that I have had a God that's walked with me every step of the way and let me ask any questions that I may have. Some people you'll run into, their next step is right here. Other people are here. They're open. You'll run into some people, they're open to conversation. They're open to conversations about faith or about Jesus. If that's the case, man, I love this step. Because I'd love to share with you a little bit more about what God has done in my life, how he's made a difference in me. And I would love for you to know that that's the same desire that he has for you. Because some people are open. And some people, if that's not the best, I love this step. When they're ready, hey, I think I'm ready. Could I come to church with you? Yes. I'll pick you up early, we'll stop and get a pumpkin spice latte, and it will be amazing. Because some people are, are ready. But then the greatest of all the steps, and that's why it's at the top of the ladder, is Jesus. Is when those people finally make that commitment to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. My friends, sometimes the best thing for us to do, God's word says it multiple times, Jesus says it, to know the right response at the right time and asking, Lord, would you help us? 
would you help us have the right response? Because again, each situation is different. And you're going to react differently if someone is completely closed off than someone who is ready. And instead of approaching a cookie-cutter approach, the best thing that I can challenge you to do is this. Holy Spirit, would you let me know the right response at the right time so I can just help them as you so lead and guide me, just take their next best step. Ultimately, I would love for them to jump from closed up here to ready to Jesus. But sometimes that's not the case. But what if God could help you be the vessel, be the tool in which he uses to help them move from here to here? Wouldn't that be great? And then the next thing you know, Beth comes around, and then Tyler comes around, and everyone helps take that next best step. And the next thing you know, suddenly, here's where we are. Seek that right response to help people take that next best step. And then the last thing is this. The K in our mask is this. Keep Jesus as your goal. Keep Jesus as your goal. My friends, I just want to share with you that <laughs> at the end of the day, what Jesus has done in us and through us and his example of how he loves and how he speaks truth and how he offers grace should be the greatest goal that we have as we engage in stronger conversations with the world around us. And instead of seeing people as those Spartan fan pumpkin spice drinking country music listening to Republicans or Democrats, we choose to see them as Jesus sees us. An amazing redemption story just waiting to happen. That this isn't our time to categorize people in a certain way, but rather to say, hey, Jesus, you're my goal, and how you love and care for them is how I want to love and care for them. How you speak truth is how I want to speak truth. How you in encounter them is how I want to encounter them. My friends, I want to let you know that that's exactly how Jesus treated Peter and Paul and James and John. That's how he treated the woman at the well in, in, in John chapter 4 and the woman caught in the act of adultery. That his example for how we treated all of them is our example for how we treat them as well. And I also want to let you know that that's how Jesus treated us too. That one time, each and every one of us was not as close to God as we are now. And I pray that you all have an intimate personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But if you've not yet committed your life to Jesus Christ, or if you remember back in the time before you were, there is a time where you were all of those things that sometimes we accuse others of being. But God didn't give up on you, did he? No, what did he see in you? He saw the potential. He saw someone made in the image of God who had just wandered. And his great hope for us still was and is to bring us home. That we're an amazing redemption story just waiting to happen. My brothers, I, I want to say one other thing too. What's probably the mo most heartbreaking thing for me about all this as a pastor is to see the fights that happen inside the church over things that we've been talking about so far politics and masks and policies and governments and all this stuff. My friends, I just want to let you know something. What draws us together in the body of Christ is so much greater than anything that could ever tear us apart. And when you get to heaven, there's not going to be a Republican heaven and a Democrat heaven. There's not going to be a mask heaven and a no mask heaven. There's only going to be one heaven under one name, and that's the name above every name, and that's the name of Jesus. And in him is where we find our unity, and in him is where we find our, our strength. And I love how Jesus himself prayed for it. Look, throw that up for me, would you, from John chapter 17? There's one more passage, one more verse. Holy Father, this is Jesus' prayer for us. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be what? Even as we are one, even as God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit are one, so that we may be one. And let me remind you again what the Apostle Paul says later in Galatians 3. Throw that next verse up for me. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So my hope and my prayer is for you that as you look at those who maybe don't see things eye to eye, especially in the body of Christ, that maybe you've made that commitment to Jesus already. But when things start to get a little divisive, that you'll see the unity that you have in Jesus is so much more important than any of those things that could ever divide you. And is it okay to have healthy debate and conversation? You better believe it. But how we do it, making the most of every opportunity, of acting graciously and attractively in those moments, of seeking the right response for the next best step, and above all, to keep Christ as your goal, that is the key. I wonder what would happen if you had conversations like that this week with people who are so very different from you. As a matter of fact, here's what I'm going to invite you to do. Some of you are taking notes. You're taking e-notes. Here's what I want to ask you. Think of a neighbor or a family member or a coworker who is so very different from you 
that has maybe challenged you with some conversations these past six months. Let them come to mind. You may need both sides of your notes for this one if you have a long list. But I just want you to think of maybe one or two, and here's what I'm going to invite you to do. Jot them down. Jot those names down. Who are those people who are maybe so very different from you? Then what would it look like if you lived out these mask principles this week? I wonder what could happen. I think something amazing could happen because I've been blessed to see it happen in my own life time and time before. Um, I had a pastor friend who once shared me about one of my favorite stories about people who were so very different, but God through his grace, because one person lived out this message that we heard today, see the redemption in a life forever changed and transformed because of what Jesus did through that person. The guy's name is Bruce, and he had a, another guy named Donnie. And Donnie was this amazing Christian man who lived in his home all of his life, born and raised in this one home. But as the city began to morph and change around him, all the family started to move out, and some interesting characters started to move into the neighborhood, some troublesome characters. And here's Donnie, still in the same old house with his neighborhood completely changing around him. And what used to be nice little family homes around him began to become these spots where some troublesome characters would move in. And one day, one of these individuals did, and his name was Bruce. Bruce moved in right next door to Donnie, and to say that they were different would be an understatement. Donnie's this amazing Christian godly man who always did things the right way. And here comes Bruce who loved to party and who loved to t- kind of live life his own way. And so they knew once Bruce and his buddies started moving in that things were going to be a little challenging for Donnie. And well, how was Donnie going to respond? Well, Bruce loved to antagonize Donnie and so he would day after day, moment after moment, any time he had an opportunity to do so. And one of the favorite things that Bruce loved to do to Donnie is when Donnie would be outside, he's an older man, he's a senior adult, and he still loved to mow his yard with a push lawnmower. You know those old ones? Not the motorized ones, the ones that you just have to push, the push, push lawnmowers. And so when Donnie would get out there and he'd start with his push lawnmower, he would hear these little responses from Bruce and his buddies on the front porch yelling, Hey, you ever heard of a motor? You ever heard of gas? Good luck, Neanderthal. And they would just consistently contra- or, or bring, bring Donnie down as he's out there just doing these moments and things. Day after day and time after time they would do this. And Donnie would just do his best to act graciously and attractively for his neighbors. And on one Friday night, Bruce and his buddies were out doing what they usually do. And on their way home from the bar, they had had a few too many. And Bruce had a run-in with a telephone pole, and the telephone pole won. And so Bruce had to go to the hospital, and his arm was broken in multiple places. And he got home late, late Friday night from the hospital with his arm all bandaged up, sitting there in his room trying to sleep off what had happened the night before. Sure enough, early on Saturday morning, what does he hear in in the front yard? That sound. Oh man, he was looking for someone to chew on, and this would be just right. And so Bruce gets out of bed. He's already in a bad mood. And as he runs to the front door, he kicks that screen door open. And he's getting ready to yell, but he notices something. Donnie's not mowing his own yard. Donnie is mowing Bruce's yard. And he looks out, and he starts to yell to Donnie, his neighbor, What are you doing? And Donnie doesn't stop. He just keeps on mowing. Just keeps on mowing. So he gets off the porch and on that front step, and he says, What are you doing? And and I just don't think Donnie could hear, because Donnie was old and his hearing was bad already. So I just don't even think Donnie could hear. So sure enough, Bruce gets down, finally walks into the yard, stops right in front of the lawnmower, and he says, What are you doing? Donnie stops, he looks up at Bruce, and he says, My neighbor, I'm mowing your yard. And he mowed right around him. (laughs) Right? It was amazing. Well, Bruce doesn't know what to do. He's never seen anything like this. He's never seen anyone act like this, especially after he had been so rude and callous to him before. So Bruce starts walking back in the house, and he slams that screen door. And a couple other times, he makes his way back to yell something back at Donnie. But every time he tries, nothing comes to mind. So sure enough, later in that day, when all of his buddies come home from work, they said, Bruce, did you mow our yard? How'd you mow our yard with one arm? He said, no, the nerd next door did it. And they said, you let him mow our yard? Yeah, you got something to say about it? No, no, it's fine. You want to let him mow our yard? That's fine. Well, what Donnie didn't know is that Bruce had an amazing godly aunt who for months had been asking, Bruce, why don't you come to church? Bruce, why don't you come to church? If you come to church, I'll take you to steak dinner afterwards. Well, as a guy, you can only deny steak dinners for so long. So sure enough, that one day, Bruce had nothing better to do. What can he do? He's got a broken old arm. There's not much else he can do. So he shows up to church some Sunday morning with his aunt, or his aunt, 
And guess whose shiny little bald head he sees sitting just two rows in front of him? But Donnie. Suddenly all the pieces started to come together. And through an amazing series of events, through so many people just like Donnie and his aunt and the pastor on that day, that very moment, Bruce gave his heart and his life to Jesus Christ. He stepped to this part of the ladder. From here to here to here to here to here to here. And one of the first people that he stopped over to thank, guess who it was? It was Donnie. Bruce knocks on that screen door, and as Donnie opens the door, he says, Well, howdy, neighbor. And Bruce said, I just want to thank you, Donnie. And Donnie, being so humble, he said, For what? And Bruce said, Just for mowing my yard. In a world that was so divided, there was someone who decided to not let the division become something they just ignore, but he chose instead to engage in the way that Jesus Christ would in a world that was so very broken. And what was the result? Bruce now is a believer in Jesus Christ because of someone just like Donnie, just like you and just like me. I wonder what would happen if we did the same this week. If we didn't look at the divisions, but we saw them instead as opportunities. An opportunity to engage someone. How? Graciously and attractively. Seeking God through your Holy Spirit to give you the right response. And Jesus, I'm, I'm keeping you as the goal. I, I just want to treat these people like you treated me when I was lost, when I was far away, when I was broken, when I needed healing. Help me treat them just like you treated me. I wonder how many Bruce and Donnie stories we would begin to hear in the days to come. Tracy, I want to invite you to come on up. We're going to sing that song, or a song as an ender today. And I just want to invite you to stand. Would you stand with me this morning? Hey, you had that paper and you've got those names written down. If you're keeping notes in your phone, you've got those names written down. Here's what I'm going to invite you to do. To live out God's word today. Lord, would you help me see the opportunity that you're going to give me this week? What opportunity am I going to have for this coworker, this neighbor, this political rival? Would you help me to make the most of this opportunity? As a matter of fact, if you've got that paper, if you've got that name on your phone, just, I want you to put it up in your hand like this. This is our offering to God. Lord, back to you, here's what I'm asking. Would you help me make the most of this opportunity? Would you help me? Help me to come through stronger in my conversation, relying more on you than I ever have before. And may you be glorified through it. Would you pray with me today? God, you're more than good. You're amazing. And, and in this time and in this moment, I know that we're living in a divided world, but Lord, you've already given us all the amazing opportunities to change that. Right now in each workplace and in each home and in each neighborhood, you've placed members of your body who, empowered through your spirit, can make a profound difference, just like Donnie did with Bruce. And Lord, maybe it's through mowing a yard. Maybe it's through a cup of coffee with a friend. Maybe it's just being the shoulder to cry on or just someone that's a listening ear in those moments. Lord, if we just make the most of every opportunity, if we act graciously and attractively, if we keep you as the goal and seek just the right response you have for us, I believe wholeheartedly that our world can change, that we too can come through stronger. So Lord, I don't know all the names on all these lists, but I know that you do and you know them all, each by name. And it's your hope and plan that they will come to know you as Lord and Savior, that we will see them not as masked or anti-mask or Republican or Democrat, but rather as an amazing redemption story just waiting to happen. So Father, for those of us who are maybe divided, would you bring us together in peace? Would you remind us that in you we are one and what we have in common in you is so much greater than anything that could ever tear us apart? Jesus, we're going to believe you for it all. We're going to pray in great faith, trusting and believing that there are going to be all sorts of opportunities this week. Would you help us to make the most of them? We love you, Jesus. We praise you. We ask it all in your name. And everybody said, amen and amen. We want to invite you to sing this God is so good again with us. He is the one who is so good. He's the one who cares about each and every one of these steps as we draw closer to him. So let's sing this out this morning and worship him. I am blessed, I am whole, I am healed, I am whole, I am saved in Jesus' name. Highly favored, anointed, filled with your power for the glory of Jesus' name. I am blessed, I am whole. Jesus' name, highly favored, 
again. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good. We serve a good, good God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Online family and family here, we are so glad you guys joined us to worship this morning. And we just pray that you have a blessed week as you go out. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Shattered like a piece of glass The more broke you are, the more